Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 23. In this tutorial we are going to focus on a health bar as well as getting game over. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this massive series and with that in mind, let's get to work. So I want to quickly gloss over something that we did at the end of last tutorial and that's getting the timing right of our skeleton. Obviously since the last tutorial I've done a little bit of work and I actually have the timing down to relatively something decent. Uh, so I just want to share with you what it is because I'm expecting this video to come out pretty soon after the last one. Um, so all we need to do for this is here where we had the take health, uh, wait for seconds 2.1, change that if you're using the same model as me to 1.1 and take that and paste it below the health points reduction there and just wait for one second there save head back to unity when we press play and go up to our enemy he will take health offers at just the right time there we go and again and again and so on so we're going to still work with this whole mechanic because we're going to give ourselves a health bar. Now, how do we get health bar to work? Well, ultimately, the best way to do it is dictate how much your health is worth. We're not going to use any advanced mathematics just yet. We're going to use a standard number. So let's start with just the health bar itself. So game object, UI, and let's have um, just do a raw image. We'll do it that way. Let's double click to focus it if unity wants to focus it there we go so let's have this at let's have it at the top of our screen so position in the anchor is going to be top middle uh, zero everything out so we can see it and now let's stretch it so as it looks a little bit more like a health bar this is just going to be the health bar container so we'll maybe just have like a black box where our health bar can be so let's change it to black and we want to establish how uh, long our health bar is going to be. So let's say we have health of uh, 300. So we want it to be uh, width of, let's have, let's have a, kind of like an outline of four each side. So we want the width to be 308 because we want four pixels either side and at the top and bottom. And then we have to establish how high we want our health bar to be. So maybe a value of about 30 would seem relevant. So we need a height of 38. If it doesn't make sense just yet, it will in a second. So this, if we press play, is our health bar container. So this object isn't really gonna change too much at the moment, but if we right click and rename, let's call it health container. Hold control, press D to duplicate. And we essentially need to drag and drop it onto health container itself. If I actually spell health correctly. And we'll call this health bar. Its width is going to be 300. And the height is going to be 30. And let's also change the color to a nice bright red. And what I might do finally is on the health container, I will reduce the alpha rather than just have it plain black. So we'll have to have the alpha as about one, two, three. And see how that looks in our game view now. Okay, so there's our health. Awesome. So next what we have to do is link the fact that our health is relative to being hurt by the skeleton. So to do that, we need to go into our health monitor script. So let's find it in the scripts and health monitor right there so we're going to focus um mostly on this script in this tutorial because we're also going to use it to deal with a game over screen uh, the first thing we need to do is actually declare a new variable which is that red health bar that we've created so public and it'll be game object and we'll just call it health bar simple and we have to take note that void update contains when we reduce our health. 
So rather than have health display, I'm going to take that away just for now, but we might use it for debugging purposes later on. We're going to have health bar. So we need to dictate the length of the health bar and make it relative to our health at the moment. So if we do increase health, um, obviously we need to use some math then to apply the logic so as our health bar never exceeds anything. So health bar dot get component and we need to access the rect transform component. That is where we're able to adjust the width and height of the bar itself. So open close bracket and we need to change the size delta. So size delta, that's a capital D on delta there. And we need to use a vector two, not side delta. I meant size delta. Uh, yes, we need to use a vector two here rather than a vector three. The reason we're going vector two is because we're only dealing with two axes. We're dealing with the X and Y. We're not dealing with that third dimension of the Z here because it's, it's a 2D thing. So we don't need to worry about the third dimension. So new vector two and in brackets, we need to put the name of our actual health value. So in this case, it's going to be health points and then the size or rather the height of what it is. So it is actually 30 and a semicolon. So this is always going to be static. It's always going to be 30, the height of it. It's never going to change, at least not for us here. You may want it to. There's no stopping you from doing it. If you want to do something slightly out the ordinary, why not? It's your game that you're developing. So here we are making that equal to whatever our health value is. So that means that we need to change the default value up here to 300. So it's always, always relative. Now, I'm going to save that. And I'm going to press play now. So he should be able to attack us, well, 30 times before our health runs out. But it does actually help, before I get a little bit ahead of myself, if I attach that to the um, script itself. So I'm trying to remember where our health monitor was. There it is. So it's in our first person character. So we just need to attach that health bar over there and press play and let's check this out so he should attack us and there's our health going down from our health bar so like i say he should be able to attack us 30 times before our health completely runs out so what happens when our health runs out well it's game over isn't it so let's create a game over screen now the game over screen is going to be very simple it's not going to be too drastic, but it's something that we'll build on yet again. It's always best to get the basic mechanics down and then refine everything later on. I That's how I build games. It's how a lot of people build games. Get the mechanics working and then take it from there. So in order to do that, I am going to save my scene there. Perfect. And if we go up here, you'll remember that we only have this one scene. We've only ever dealt with this one scene up until now. Now's where it gets fun and we start creating multiple scenes. So let's go to File and New Scene. So I'm going to make this real simple. I'm just going to have a black screen with the words Game Over in the middle. So Game Object, UI, let's go Raw Image. Uh, let's anchor it, stretch it all the way, uh, zero everything out. We, we know how to do this now. I'm not going to go over all this again. Change it to black so it's a completely black screen. Game Object, UI text let's have the text nice and white and let's have it dead center and it just says game over so when we hit the game over screen it should look like this so obviously we can refine it a little bit later on so let's save our scene and let's call it game over now this is where it starts getting interesting because we have to deal with some scene management here. So if we go to file and go to build settings, we're able to add scenes into this section here. And we've seen this before very early on in the series. All we need to do is click on add open scenes. It's now assigned this scene 
as a value zero. So if we come off this and head back to our original scene and go to file and build settings and click add open scenes, it's added the value of one. So this scene we're in now is actually scene one. We're going to change around these later on when we start building different menus, different scenes and everything. But for now, I'm going to keep them just as they are. But we can always backtrack a little bit and just make sure everything is relative. So remember, zero is game over. One is our main scene. So in order to get game over, we need to head to our health monitor script yet again. And at the top, we need to use a namespace called using unity engine dot scene management. This will allow us within our script to uh, decide, yep, we can change scene because the script knows that we're able to do that. So what we need to do is in void update down here, we need to have an if statement to check if our health points is less than or equal to zero. Zero would obviously be game over. So if and in brackets health points less than or equal to zero, then do the following. Scene manager dot load scene and in brackets zero because zero is that game over screen semicolon and save. Now, if I let the skeleton enemy uh, attack as he is, it's going to take 30 hits. It's going to take over, what, a minute for it to actually go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit for now. And I'm going to keep that script as it is, but on the skeleton uh, AI, I think it is, I'm going to have the skeleton take off 50 health points at a time, just so it only takes a couple of hits for us to get hurt. So both those scripts are saved. They're just compiling now. So now let's press play. We can watch our health bar disintegrate and then we should get game over when we have zero health left. There's one, and two, three, four, five, and there we go. Health gone, game over. Now, obviously, there's more intricate ways to get onto this. You can freeze everything. You can fade out. And obviously, we'll get onto that. We'll make it look awesome. But as I said, we've got the mechanics in place. We've got the fact that once we get to zero health, we get game over. We've got the fact that our health is being reduced in a health bar. And considering how quick uh, we made that, I don't think it looks half bad. So next tutorial, what we're going to play around with is a main menu and probably, in fact, more than likely the ability to respawn. Now, when I say respawn, um, I would like to give it the option of quit or respawn. So we'll probably do that on our game over screen, but you can have the, if you want to, I'll also show you how you can automatically respawn. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.